In this video, we're going to be looking at a simple flight mechanic to allow the player to fly when a button's held down. So, in order to set this up, first thing we need to do is we need to come to our player. We need to edit its behaviors. And I've added it already, but I'll just delete it. We need to add the eight directions. Now, eight directions allows us to move in any directions, up, down, left, or right. Which is a really, really nice one to have. So, we can add that one in. And there's a couple of things that we want to change on it. So first thing that we want to change on it is we're just going to scroll down and we can change eight directions to left and right if we want to even want a hover mechanic. Uh, but I'll release another video on a hover mechanic that's a bit more advanced. And we also want to change the angle to no, so we cannot rotate. Just means we can move left and right. We might also want to change the speeds, make the characters a bit faster. But obviously that's something you can play around with once you've got the mechanic up and working. Finally, we need to make it so it's disabled by default. This means that it will not work when we hit play. We'll still be using our platform behavior instead. So the other thing that we need is we're going to insert a new object. And we want to add the keyboard object. Now, the keyboard object means that we can get access to keyboard functions. It normally appears here. I must have already added it already. So yeah, you see I've got it here. So add the keyboard behavior if you've not done so already. The keyboard object, sorry. And then we can go to our event sheet for the first time in this video. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if a keyboard key is down. So I'm going to set this to space. So I'm going to check if the player is holding space. So if they're holding space, what do I want to do? I want to take my player and I want to take the eight directions and I want to enable it. At the same time as enabling it, I want to also disable the platform behavior. So I'm going to go down to the platform behavior, set enabled, and I'm going to set it to disabled. Then what I need to do is copy and paste this whole thing. So control C, control V, click on this one here and click invert. So now we're checking if space is released. And then we're going to disable the eight directions and enable the platform like so and hit done. And with that set up, when I'm holding space now, I've got the eight direction behavior. As soon as I let go of space, I drop as a platformer again. So really, really simple platform behavior. Now, the second half of this video is going to be a little bit longer. And I'm going to show you how to add a fuel meter so the player can only fly for a certain amount of time. So first thing we need to do is right click and add a new global variable. And we're going to call it fuel. And I'm going to set it to 100. Obviously, you can change this depending on how much fuel you want the player to have. We'll start as 100. So that's our first thing set up. Next, we need a progress bar for our player to have. Now, this could be added to a HUD. I'm going to add it above the player. So I'm going to right click, insert new object. I'm going to use an object called the progress bar. So this will store the progress of a complete task, or in this case, store how much fuel we've got left. So I'm going to create it just above the player, like so. And then I'm going to give it a new behavior. So edit behaviors, add new behavior. And I'm going to scroll down until we find one called pin. This will allow it to attach to the player. So it always follows our player. So now we've got that attached. What we can do is we can go to our event sheet and we can say at the start of the layout, Fuel into object and player. This means that our fuel meter is always going to be attached to our player no matter where he goes. So now we've got that set up, we hit play, we'll see that we've got this fuel meter, but the fuel meter doesn't store anything at the moment, so we need to make sure it's storing the correct amount. So we're going to add a new events, system, every tick. And we're going to say that fuel set progress, and this is going to equal fuel. So this is always going to take the current value of fuel and turn it into the progress bar. So now the progress bar will be full. We need to make sure it disappears after a certain amount of time. So when space is held down, we're going to add an action. We're going to say that fuel, we're going to subtract from. Oh. Apologies, under system, it's a global variable. So we're going to go down to subtract 
from fuel by one. So now when I hold in space, the value will go down. Now, in order for this to happen, we need to actually have fuel. So I'm just going to right click, add another condition, and we're going to say oh, system compare variable fuel is greater than zero. So if space is down and fuel is greater than zero, then obviously we want to be able to fly. But as we fly, we subtract one from fuel. Now, we also want to disable flying if we've run out of fuel. So we're just going to add another condition here. And we're going to say compare variables. If fuel is less than or equal to zero, this just stops any issues with sometimes it going into minus one by mistake or not reaching minus one. So less than zero. I'm just going to change this to an or block. So if any of these conditions are true, so now in order to fly, one, you must have more than zero fuel and space must be held down. Um, and if it's not, or you have no fuel, then we change back to where we were before. So let's test this. You'll see that I fly, run out, and I drop. Finally, what we need to do is actually give us a fuel back. So we're going to add a new event system. We're going to scroll down to every X seconds. So we can set this up. I've worked out that about 0 0.05 is a good amount, but obviously this is something you can play around with. So every 0 0.05 seconds, we'll get some fuel back. So obviously this could be something you pick up in a game, if not as a collectible, so you collect more fuel. But in this case, I'm just going to say after a certain amount of time, the player gets fuel back. So we're going to say system add to fuel by one. So now what we get is we fly. Once our meters run out, it will start to restore itself and go back. One final addition you might want to add is we can check if we've got 100% fuel. So we'll say apologies need to go into system. And we'll compare variable. And we'll say if fuel is equal to 100, then we can actually set visible and make this invisible. And obviously we can do the flip of this as well. So we can invert and say if fuel's not equal to 100, then set visible. Final thing we do actually need to do, before I forget, is on this line of code here, we're going to add another condition. And we're going to check that our fuel is less than 100. That just means that we can't get more than 100 fuel. So less than or equal to 100. Only at that stage will we be able to add one to fuel. So if all this is set up correctly, you can hold space to fly. When you run out, you fall down. And then our bar fills back up to the top.